I'd originally set myself a challenge to climb Snowdon as many times as possible in 24 hours to raise money for Metaviva um, metastatic breast cancer research because my sister has been diagnosed with it. But after injuring my knee, I had to change my challenge. Having torn both the two main ligaments in my knee and fractured it, the only thing that I was capable of doing was stand up paddle boarding, but sitting down. So my friend and I decided to do the Caledonian Canal Great Glen Canoe Trail. Um, most people would take three to five days to complete the challenging long distance expedition by canoe or kayak. But we decided to push ourselves to do it in just two days on inflatable stand up paddle boards. The Caledonian Canal connects the Scottish east coast at Inverness with the west coast at Corpac near Fort William. The canal was constructed in the early 19th century by Scottish engineer Thomas Telford. Most of the route is open water, locks, rather than canal. The night before our challenge we stayed at a campsite. So we launched from the beach at the campsite and we had about an hour's journey to get to the start of the Caledonian Canal. Here we Canal. are at the start, the Caledonian Canal at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's horrible weather, very windy and raining. So we're gonna have great fun. And what Lucy has mentioned is just that we've already paddled for an hour or so to get here. <laughs> but we're gonna do it. I'm wearing my bright pink against breast cancer tabard so everybody can see me coming and knows what I'm doing this challenge for. Got two Nessies ready to go. My Nessie looks drunk. We've just got out for our first portage, so we've got to carry our boards. The Neptune staircase, a massive portage. How many locks? All the way up there. Where's Kerry? Come on, Kerry! Just made it to the top of the Neptune staircase. Eight locks in a row up a steep hill. Here comes Kerry and I'm out of breath. We've been going about an hour. We attached little wheels to the back of our suck boards so that we could drag them along on these long portages. It made it a lot easier. your camera when you're trying to film. Not easy, but luckily I didn't fall off. As you can see, the weather is not nice. Pouring with rain and windy. We did this at the end of July, beginning of August. And when we were thinking of doing it, we thought, oh, the weather will be lovely. We'll be able to sunbathe, sit on our boards and get a suntan. But we were wrong. Kerry's having granola and yoghurt on her paddle board now. I'm just going to paddle back and see what she's doing. It's very windy. It's quite hard to paddle against the wind. <laughs> I can't believe you're eating yoghurt. Oh. 
just coming down now to Gare Lockie, which is at the top of Loch Lockie, where Loch Lockie starts. And this is the point where if we had been doing it in five days, our day one would be ending now. But obviously we're carrying on. This is the start of Loch Lockie and it's horrible. Can't see anything. It's raining, it's windy, it's cold, and this lock is quite long. So, see you later. Loch Lochy is the third deepest lock in Scotland, 70 metres deep. It's 16 kilometres long, and it contains rainbow trout, brown trout, and northern pike. Hope we don't see any. Not keen on fish pike have very sharp teeth. You can just see the salmon farming nets and enclosures over there on the right. They're huge. It's like paddling in the sea when you're on a lock and the wind is rushing across it making waves. There's a few big boats on the lock, but we've not seen a single other kayak, canoe or paddleboard. This weather is going to take a lot longer for our challenge than we had anticipated. because It's really slowing us down. Kerry just weed in her wetsuit. Pardon? <laughs> Can't see anything but cloud in the distance. And this lock is going on for 16 kilometers. It seems to be never ending. So we're now at South Lagan at the end of Loch Lockie and this would be the end of day two if we were doing it in five days but we're not we're doing it in two days so we're carrying on next we'll be going along Loch Oik The sun came out and it was beautiful scenery on the way down to Loch Oik. But the sunny, dry weather didn't last long. Just on the last bit of the canal to Fort Augustus now. Probably got another hour. We've been going for 11 hours and we've got about an hour left to go so we're pretty tired now and it's starting to rain again hopefully we'll be there soon
where it took us a lot longer than an hour. But eventually we got to the end of our day one. We finished at Fort Augustus, just at the end of Loch Ness. So at the end of day one, we'd covered 45 kilometres and it had taken us 13 hours. A normal person, that would be day three and a half. We stayed overnight to campsite just by Fort Augustus. It's day two and we're at the start of Loch Ness and it's lovely weather again. Can't see much and the waves are going the wrong way. So it might be a long day. Looking forward to it, Kerry? You lied. You lied to me. You said you wanted to see a little flat pool around the corner. You'll be there. Yeah, I, no, excited. It might be eight hours today if we if our arms work. <laughs> if not, maybe a bit longer. is the second largest lock after Loch Lomond. It's 37 kilometres long, 230 metres deep, and is the second deepest lock in Scotland. It contains more water than all of the lakes in England and Wales put together. The fish that you find in Loch Ness are European eel, northern pike, common minnows, Atlantic salmon, and brown trout. 
but there's exceptionally low water visibility due to the high peat content in the surrounding soil. Loch Ness is the largest body of water in the Great Glen. Guns come out! Yay! It's warm for a minute. We've got a nice view behind. Come around. nowhere near halfway along Loch Ness. It was much further still than we thought it was.
found a nice little beachy area to stop for a snack and a drink in the sunshine before carrying on. Little lunch stop on Loch Ness and the sun's come out and we're about halfway ish. We weren't halfway. We are about maybe an hour from the end of Loch Ness now and we're both very tired. Hopefully it won't be much further. The water's calmed down a bit. Some nice views from that. A bit foggy at the front. Hopefully it's just around the next corner. It wasn't just around the next corner. We were still hours away from the end of Loch Ness. What we could see wasn't the end of Loch Ness. It wasn't 10 minutes away. It was a few more hours. We're at the end of Loch Ness. That's been the hardest bit of the whole two days. Sideways wind blowing us across into the shore and just so strong that you couldn't move forwards in it and just paddling on one side to keep in a straight line paddling and just not moving so that was awful Kelly's just coming in but we're now at the start of the Caledonia Canal absolutely dead oh. Just coming into the first lock of the Caledonian Canal. I think there's quite a long way still to go. A few hours. Not sure we're going to make it because of the weather conditions that have slowed us down so much. It's taken way too long to get along Loch Ness. Not sure we've got it left in us. So this might be the end. Get off and see, look at the map, see how much further there is to go. We've decided to stop now. We're not far off in Venice, but we've just been battling the weather all day. We've gone like 20k less than we did yesterday because the wind was just blowing us backwards and into the shore and it was just brutal. So we know if the weather had been better, we'd have easily done this in two days, but we've been yeah. paddling for nearly 24 hours and we've gone like 40. 70 odd kilometres and that's it. I think we've done well. We have done well. So at the end of day two, we had paddled 25 kilometres and it had taken us nearly nine hours at a much, much slower average speed than yesterday. But we've done it.